There are so many different variables that impact home value from the trends, indicators, and conditions to what is in a house to what's not in a house. If you saw your neighbor's home sell recently and it sold for $500,000 and you're thinking, I think we might have the same floor plan or I think we could do the same, but they had solid surface floors and we have carpet. How's that gonna impact me whenever it comes time to sell my house? Let's talk about that. My name is Andrew Finney and my passion is helping you make sense of real estate. If you need help finding a top agent near you or if you simply want to drop me a line to say hello, my contact info is below. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. Thank you. All right, my friend, let's take a closer look at this. Whenever I chat with people about their home value, sometimes they're like, hey, you know, Andrew, my neighbor sold their home for $500,000. I think their home was something like 3,000 square feet. Well, mine is 2,900 square feet. They had real wood floors and I have carpet. You know, should I be able to get $500,000 for my house too? Really all depends, but it's highly unlikely because here's the list of the things that an appraiser is gonna look at. And it's important to know this up front and how this is realistically gonna translate to you. If the difference between those two properties is one was 3,000 square feet and one was 2,900 square feet, let's use easy math. If the home value is $200 a square foot for the difference of 100 square feet, what's the math on that? $20,000 dollars difference. So if that neighbor sold their home for $500,000, maybe if all things were equal and considered here, it'd be $480,000 for their house that they're considering selling. But that's also what's really important to understand about how an appraiser is going to look at your house based upon the nuts and the bolts and the math of the property. I'll give you a quick list of what they're looking at. The first one being the square footage of home. In our example a moment ago, we were talking about the square footage of the home being 3,000 compared to 2,900. Really quickly breaking out that math that the average sales sales price of a home in that area is $200 per square foot. Doing that math, 100 square feet multiplied by 200 is a difference of $20,000. Doesn't look so big on paper, but it is a huge difference in the bank. The second thing that appraisers are going to look at are the number of bedrooms. Depending on how much a bedroom is worth in your community will also dictate whether a five bedroom or a four bedroom home will sell for more. That also brings in the question, the number of bathrooms. Are they half bathrooms, three quarter bathrooms, quarter bathrooms, full bathrooms? What kind of bathrooms are they and were they upgraded? The fourth consideration they often go off is the general condition of the property. That's why good home maintenance is so critically important. Not only to help you get the best price for your home, but to also help the appraiser say, hey, you know what? This is a well-maintained home. It looks like they've been keeping up on this property. I noticed that water heater over there looks to be about three years old. That HVAC system over here looks to be about seven years old. Everything is looking good. No moisture stains going on. Everything is in serviceable condition. These are good things that keep your home looking great and helping you get the best price for it. And the fifth one we all know, which is location, location, location. Where is it? Does it have a water view? Is it on the beach? Where is this property located in relation to its comparables? And are there any added benefits that are gonna increase the value of this property based upon its location? Appraiser is gonna be looking at that. The sixth thing that they look at is the age of the home. Now, generally when you look at it, it's just like when we think about us as people, we get classified into these groupings of generations, right? We have millennials, Gen Z, Gen X, Gen Y, baby boomers, all this fun stuff, right? Well, so is true of homes. Generally, the appraiser is going to be assigning a generational range to a home by a standard variance of plus or minus 10 years. So let's give you a for instance. If the house was built in 2010, appraisers will be looking at homes that were built from 2000 all the way to 2020. That's considered a generational age range that an appraiser will be assessing. The seventh are the upgrades that you've done to the property. Have you done anything different to it since the time that you've owned the property? And that's the trick. And this is where I always suggest that people to not only keep a homeowner journal, but your list of improvements as well. So when you have your list of improvements, you can show your receipts, you can show your invoices, you can show what projects were done, when they were done, who performed the work. All of this stuff comes into force whenever you're talking about a home that you may have done a lot of upgrades on and you're trying to justify the asking price of the property if it's higher than your area sells. Being able to do that is very, very critically important to you, to your success with that appraiser and also in the mind's eye of a home buyer knowing that not only only did you do those improvements, but you can show on paper everything that was done and when it was done. The eighth thing that an appraiser is going to be looking at are the overall market conditions, which will take us into point nine really quick. Normally, an appraiser is looking at the most recent 90 days activity in your local marketplace. Every quarter is going to show a trend. It's going to show a pattern. Our price is going up. Our price is going down. Are they remaining about the same? So it's an important consideration that an appraiser is going to be looking at the condition of the market, but also examining and putting the most weight into the most recent 
comparables, often the most recent 90 days. As a pro tip to better understand what your local marketplace is doing, keep an eye on the amount of homes on the market. Keep an eye on their list price to what they ultimately sell for. It's oftentimes very different. List price, the sales price ratios will let you know if you're planning on selling your home about what kind of negotiations are taking place and what homes are being appraised for. Just for reference as a list price, the sales price ratio, if you had a home that was listed at $500,000 and let's say it sold for $490,000, that would be a list price value of 100% at the $500,000 marker to a sales price value at the 490 marker of 98%. The difference of which is 2%, $10,000 in this case, right? If you can analyze that and you can keep that in mind whenever you get ready to list your home and you can assess whether it's going up or whether it's going down, then you'll know the right listing strategy for you by gleaning understanding from your trusted real estate advisor and reviewing a strong listing strategy for you. The other thing to take into consideration is how many price reductions are going on in your area. And this is critically important. If you see half of all the homes going on price reduction, what does that say? That says that even though there may be strong buyer demand in the market, the prices are out of reach for the majority of home buyers. And sellers that truly have a desire to sell their home are having to reduce that price to compensate to the market value of the home of what a buyer is realistically able not only to afford but is willing to offer on the properties so keep that in perspective and keep that in mind when you're choosing the timing of when you want to sell ultimately the best time to sell a home or to buy a home is when it makes sense in your life for factors and reasons that are unique and personal to you and as a final pro tip to really understand and dive deep into what's going on in your local marketplace look at how many homes go up for sale that don't sell. Called expired listings. Now there's a lot of reasons this could happen. Either something changed in the seller's life. There's a host of reasons why homes go off the market without selling from overpricing and being back crazy with your pricing to being an extremely difficult negotiation to maybe they were trying to sell it and it had a tenant in the property. Maybe the inspection just wasn't checking out. The appraisal came back in too low and the seller decided to take it off the market or let it expire. There's so many different reasons that go into it. Talk it over with your trusted real estate advisor in your local marketplace to make Make sure that you have an understanding of the overall situation when you're forming a strong listing strategy for you. All right, my friend, now let's talk about how to price your home to sell by understanding valuations versus comparables and eight steps to sell your house. Looking forward to our next conversation. We'll see you in a few.